It's a rivalry renewed in North Bloomfield Township between two schools separated by just over seven miles as the Galleon Lady Tigers invade the castle to take on the Northmore Lady Knights in a pre-Christmas clash. And we got it coming your way on your smart devices, smartphone, tablet, PC, TV, and more coming your way next. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Available to care for your athlete with same-day appointment options. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Lender. Craftsman. Dog Dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the castle for tonight's non-conference rivalry matchup between the Galleon Lady Tigers and the Northmore Lady Knights on this Christmas Eve's Eve's Eve. <laughs> Hayden Gray, once again joined, as always, by Hayden Gray, and rivalry matchup, two teams going in opposite directions right now. Yeah, the, the Lady Knights are, are more on that upward trend right now, and, and Galleon's in, hitting some rough patches so far this season, still looking to get a conference win, which is a non-conference game this evening, but just two wins so far for Coach Rush and the Lady Tigers. Northmore coming into this one 6-3. They are 4-2 in the KMAC, number two behind a very, very good Cardington Lincoln squad, while Galleon, they come in at 2-7, oh, and 0-4. Oh and in the MOAC behind the likes of the Shelby Lady Whippets, Clear Fork Colts, and many, many more. Last year, actually this year, in February, the Lady Knights went to Galleon and defeated the Lady Tigers 47 to 28. And Hayden, let's take a look at those Lady Tigers of Galleon, head coached by Shawnee Rush. Yeah, you know, the Galleon Tigers, 
They're 0 and 5 in the Moak, as we said, but they have gone 500 in non-conference games. So obviously a non-conference contest here tonight. Last year they took a loss to Bellevue, 73-30 in the sectional semifinal. Offensively, they're struggling a bit to get points, averaging 32 and a half per game. And defensively, they're giving up almost 50 points a game. So that's going to result, you know, in some troubles every time. And one thing that stuck out to us was 30 and a half rebounds per game is what they're giving up right now. So struggling to crash those boards offensively defensively just a lot of a lot of trouble for them so far yeah opponents are getting double digits not only defense but offensive rebounds as well 17 offensive rebounds given up against mount gilead 30 offensive rebounds given up to marion harding so this team you know they allow a lot of second chances but there is one player on the Lady Tigers that has really shown out this year in our player spotlight, and that is Natalie Perkins. Second team all MOAC in 2019-20 and 2020-21, and she's up there on the list for most categories in the MOAC. Yeah, as you can see, she, in all statistical areas here, minus a few, she's really having her way this season. So that is one bright side for the Lady Tigers. Perkins is getting it done, 11.6 points per game, 9.1 rebounds and 2.0 blocks, so they're going to have to look to utilize her in ways tonight that they have been so far this season because she's one of a few, you know, outside of Tiana Gretter that have been getting it done for the Lady Tigers so far this year. We want to welcome you inside the Avita Workwell pregame as we now take a look. You see the Lady Tigers getting ready to go, but let's take a look at the homestanding Lady Knights of Northmore head coach Freddie Beachy. Six and three, four and two in the K-Mac, good enough for second. Last season, it was a down year for them, but they've already surpassed the win total in nine games, five and 17, although they knocked off East Knox in a sectional championship game and kept it close with Fisher Catholic in the district semifinal before falling 38-20. The good news, they returned four starters and the offense pretty much going at it right now. Now, I will say this, Hayden, the defense, the numbers right now, they're giving up 44.8 points per game, but in their two losses to Danville, they gave up 62, and into that really good Cardington-Lincoln game, they gave up 72, I believe, 72 or 77, something like that. So that's what ballooned up their defensive points per game. But in the other, those other games, the other seven, they're doing a lot better, give, averaging about 30 points per game. Yeah, a lot of resemblance here for both boys and girls programs. You know, they've both already almost surpassed, the girls have, but surpassed their lead um, wins total from last season. So success for Coach Beachy here so far this season. And as you, you know, we've talked about Lexi Wagner leading the way in a lot of categories for these Lady Knights. As we take a look at the player spotlight, she was first team all KMAC, all Central District last season. Also special, me special mention all Ohio in 2020-21. She scored her 1,000 point on December 4th at Danville, averaging 14.1 points per game. Third in the KMAC, she does a lot. She's in a lot of the categories in the top 10, 15 in the KMAC. Yeah, outside of points, she ranks fourth in rebounds at 6.9 per game. She also ranks third in assists with three a game, and then ninth in the KMAC with 3.2 steals per game. So she's one of those stat stuffers as well that's doing a lot of great things, and the seniors having a lot of success so far this season. So Lexi Wenger and company getting ready to take on Galleon here. Right now though, the Avita worked well. Pre-game, we're gonna step aside for the playing of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner.
continuing on with our Avita work well pregame. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. Hayden, first off for the Galleon Lady Tigers, and my key, got to rebound the ball, giving up 38 and a half rebounds per game. You got to get on the glass, cut that down if you want to win the night. And yours, ball security. Yeah, ball security is a big thing. Turnovers, obviously one of the most crucial, if not the most crucial, crucial aspect of the game. They're averaging right now 19.9 a game. So you don't want to give the Lady Knights any points, to, any chance to get too many easy points out in transition because they're a speedy bunch. So limit those turnovers if you're galleon. Try and keep this one as close as possible. And key players, Natalie Perkins averaging 11.6. Kiana Grader averaging 8.9. Now to the keys for the Lady Knights. Lead through Lexi. Let her lead the way. She's tops in categories and assists, steals, points. Just let it go through her. She's one of our key players at 14.1 points per game. And then Reagan Swihart as well, 2.3 assists per game. But yours, it's not the holidays yet. You still got a game left. Yeah, you know, this was something a lot of volleyball players on this, on this um, basketball team. And it was something I actually brought up as a thing you don't want to Back in volleyball season, you don't want to overlook some of these, especially in the non-conference games against a team that's below 500. These are crucial non-conference wins that they can pick up and should win. So you don't want to overlook it. You you know, it's break. They're out of school, but still have some work to be done before we hit Christmas, Travis. Taking a look at our starting lineups for both sides, this has been the Avita Work Well pregame show as we are underway from the castle. Dennison, right side for three. Swish, and we are underway. Lady Knights on the board first, three nothing. Yeah, they had some nice ball movement there, able to find a look they liked and already cash in on your first shot of the game. And immediately a turnover. And it turns into a Reagan Swihart bucket, so outrunning are the Lady Knights. You have five quick points in 40 seconds, so not what you want to give up if you're the Lady Tigers. We'll see how they handle the trap. It's Tiana Grader taking it in, air balls it, and it'll go back to the Lady Knights as you take a look at the Park National Bank replay. That nice three-point stroke by Brooke Dennison starts things off for the Lady Knights. Just underway here from the castle. Five-nothing on the Morrow County Hospital scoreboard. Wenger fakes the three, takes it to the hole, puts it up, tough shot goes. And it's quickly seven straight for the Lady Knights. Nice job by Lexi there to keep that balance and put in a difficult shot. You know, she had to adjust her body a bit, but able to use that glass and get two more for her squad. Dennison will be called with her first foul, team's first. It's the Lady Tigers looking to get on the board here early on. Desi Lester, back out the grader. Now to Cameron Eckert, working it around the perimeter, trying to get inside, but this 2-3 zone by the Lady Knights, really keeping them from doing that. It's a kick, it'll stay with Galleon. Yeah, both teams coming out. You saw the Lady Tigers kind of show their own zone on the other side, and, and Northmore's got to open up with a zone as well, try and cut off those passing lanes, make it difficult to get the ball inside. Eckert. Loses it for a second, gets it over to Grader. Now to Natalie Perkins, and she turns it over. Dennison doesn't get the layup to fall. Rebound by Galleon, back they come. That's Lester. To Perkins, she puts up the three, in and out. Offensive rebound, put back. It's good. Eckert with the bucket, and the freshman gets Galleon on the board, 7-2. Yeah, nice job to follow the shot. Didn't give up on the play and got didn't get into defense too quickly. Stuck with it and used the backboard again. Paige Caudill kicks it over to Swihart. She'll drive it in, and she's going to be fouled inside. That'll be the first foul against the Tigers. So take a look at the bucket by Galleon. The freshman just right place, right time. Uses the glass. And Winger, 
She answers on the other end with the bucket on the inbound. It's 9-2. Yeah, that's way too open of a look for Winger. I mean, over in a thousand point score, and that's just a glorified free throw for her. You know, that's just like the back of her hand. Grader kicks it to Eckert. Puts up the three off the front iron. Rebound Swihart. Not a bad look there for them, just not able to get it to fall. Left side. Moves it around the Caudill for three. Too strong. Rebound out to Galleon. They quickly push it ahead. Lester double teamed in the corner. Still trapped. Trying to find somebody. It's going to be kicked. So she gets bailed out. So we take a look at the Wenger free throw, you could say, on the inbounds. Mm -hmm. And something you're seeing, you know, our second kick ball violation here. Northmore, especially when they're in this trap, when they're swarming and moving their feet Woo. around as well. Perkins for three. She's on the board. It's 9-5. Yeah, and Perkins, uh, she shoots 24% from the three this year, so not terrible for three-point percentage. You know, it's one of those where you get into those 30s and then it's starting to look as a pretty solid number. Wenger on the other end. All the way around and down. Wenger already with seven points. It's 12-5. Going back to Perkins, though, she's eighth in the MOAC in scoring 11.6 points per game. And on the other end of things, Wenger third in the KMAC, 14.1 points per game is another turnover by the Tigers, a third. They have three players in the top seven in turnovers in the MOAC. Yeah, that's not the statistic that you want to see most of your girls pop up in. I think that's one of those where, again, you know, kind of an example tonight, if they cut back on some of these turnovers, it, it could be even smaller than a seven-point margin right now. So we'll see if, you know, the coach has any adjustments to try and work around that that one-two press. 12-5 on the Morrow County Hospital scoreboard. We want to welcome everybody watching live and free on Facebook and YouTube. Let us know where you're watching from. Give us a shout out this Christmas Eve's Eve's Eve. <laughs> now there's a joke from Friends where tomorrow is yes. the actual Christmas Eve's Eve, but I just wanted to expand on it because, you know. Can always slip in a Friends reference. Lady Knights working it around off the offensive rebound. Swihart's three too strong. He'll go out of bounds. And that will go to Galleon. Trailing by seven here, 320 left opening quarter. Earlier start because, well, kids are on vacation now. There's no JV squad for Galleon as well. So we start off tonight. We got another one tonight Yeah. at Clear Fork. The Lady Colts taking on Lexington. G-Man and Storm, they'll be on the call that game about 730. So we'll be wrapping up with this one when that begins. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Galleon. Yeah, Lady Colts have a nice season going so far. So that should be another phenomenal game just to go ahead and Stick with us right after this one. Riley Johnson checking in now for Galleon. Perkins looking to get it and does. Give and go back to her for three. She got another one. Yeah, Northmore sticking with that, that swarming defense. You can't leave Perkins open because she's going to be able to knock that down their leading score, as we've mentioned. So it's down to a four-point game. 12-8. She has six. Both buckets she made from beyond the arc. On the other end, Wenger, right side, kicks it back out. Now to Swihart, straight away three. Yes. Swihart now with five. 15-8, Northmore. Nice little three-point exhibition so far, Hayden. Yeah, you know, I, going into tonight, didn't know how, you know, what to expect in terms of three-pointers. Neither team, particularly their, what they're known for, but... We've seen both sides being able to knock down a few. Five three-pointers already made here in the first quarter. Three by the Lady Knights, two by Natalie Perkins. A foul goes against Emily Zager, who just checked in. First free throw by Grader goes. Greater 66.7% free throw shooter on the season, so looking to get the second of two to fall. Second free throw. It's good. 
Coming up on two minutes left here, opening quarter. Quick first quarter, Hayden. Yeah, and as of right now, Galleon just, um, they have tied their largest scoring first quarter for the season. They scored 10 against Plymouth in a non-conference game. So with two minutes to go, looking to have their highest scoring first quarter of the season. Kayleen Brinkman checking in for the Lady Knights. Fun stat about her, she comes off the bench, but she's sixth in the K-Mac in blocks, .6 blocks per game. She has five already this season. It's always interesting to hear about those players because they're somewhere, you know, you hear about it at all different levels of basketball. Some players prefer to, you know, whether that's something they kind of worked around with coach. Coming off that bench psychologically can always help out sometimes. Offensive rebound off the turnover, put back, goes through. Emily Zager for two. And that was a nice read by Riley Johnson. Looking like a cornerback there, picking off the pass. Couldn't get the rebound, the, the bucket to go, but got the offensive board and bucket by Zager. Another near turnover. Jump ball. It'll stay with the Tigers. Although the scoreboard still says Redbirds from last <laughs> night's boys game. Northmore boys taking care of business to move back to 500 at 4-4. Four and four. I actually... Might have a chance to talk with head coach Blake Tackett at halftime, so stick around with that. And they're going to say that it's going to go, okay. It's going to go to Galleon. Uh, everybody started running down the other way for some <laughs> reason, and nobody was there to inbound. Nonetheless, almost a turnover. Right now you're just seeing a lot of great court vision from the Northmore Lady Knights just keeping their heads on swivels, aware of where the ball is, and then they've just been able to force a lot of deflections and turnovers having their way so far. Perkins moved the pivot foot, took a step. That's a turnover. The sixth turnover by Galleon. Perkins actually second 4.8 turnovers per game, greater five turnovers, and then Cameron Eckert, 4.1. So that's something Gallia needs to do. If they want to stay in games, they need to control the ball and not give it away. That shot just inside the line doesn't go. Rebound to Gallion. And they're going to go ahead and turn the ball over. Okay, never mind. We're going to have possibly deflection. Well, we got one ref nope. saying one way, one ref saying the other, and now they will say it's a turnover. That ball took a bounce, and I believe that pass wasn't touched by any of the Lady Knights, so it's going to result in a turnover. Brooke Dennison, Paige Caudill. Checking back in. Under a minute left. Northmore by seven here, first quarter. Kick back out, Riley Johnson working it over. That's Caudill. She'll kick it left side to Dennison. Moving things around, trying to get that open look or just run the clock out. Back out the Dennison. Now to Riley Johnson. Her sister Lauren in the game as well. Yeah, nice patience being displayed here so far. On the other side, if they are trying to drive in, this is good defense from Galleon so far. You know, they're still staying very aware of what's going on, but Northmore does look like they're holding for that final shot. Dennison with it, under 10 to go here in the quarter. She'll start now. Johnson looking over, left side. Lauren Johnson for three. Off the mark. And that'll do it for the first quarter. Your score after one. Northmore 17, Galleon 10. We'll take a break. Be back with the second quarter right here, live and free on the OH Report. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Available to care for your athlete with same day appointment options. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Lender, craftsman, dog dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more.
One quarter in the books. Northmore leading Galleon 17-10. Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray here at the Castle in a quick first quarter. Lady Knights with possession to start the second. Yeah, as you said, that first quarter went by rather quickly, and I think that could account for the fact, you know, neither team in too much foul trouble, too, for, for the home squad, and Galleon just one team foul. Swihart into the lane, spin move too strong, gets her own rebound, put back too short, another offensive rebound. She'll try it again and will go to the line. Yeah, Swihart looking for a happy medium there. First one was a little bit too much, second a little bit too little, and fighting through contact on the third, so that's going to send her to the line. Foul is going to go against Greater, her second, team second. Swihart makes the first. Six points for her. Northmore, like the boys' side, girls at the well, actually not. Yeah, they're not. I at apologize. The they have the, yeah. the list. They have the list not in order of percentages. So yes. Northmore shooting sixty-two point eight. That's good enough for third in the conference. My apologies. Intercepted. Dennison to the hole. Easy bucket for the. Lady Knights, they're up 21-10. Yeah, Almost another turnover. Greater into the lane. Just doesn't go in. Rebound out to the Lady Knights. It's a good drive there from Greater. Just wasn't able to put enough strength off it. Three by Caudill, short. Swihart there with the putback. Nine points now for Reagan. It's 23-10. Quickly the other end. Short on the shot was Perkins. But the rebound comes right back to her. Greater for three. Yes. They needed that bucket, Hayden. Cuts it back to 10. Yeah, most definitely. In terms of three-pointers, Greater shooting 25% on the season. So on the team she leads. She is the leading percentage-wise for threes. And the Lady Knights turn it over, they're second. So Galleon now with a chance to cut this to single digits as we come up on six minutes left in the half. And they're hanging around. They've been able to keep it within reach, but they've just got to crack on things like you see there, the mis miscommunications and turnovers. I was about to say she wants to pick that up before it goes out of bounds because, well, it didn't matter. They're still going to put the ball right back there. Yeah. Ninth turnover by Galleon here in the first half. Lady Knights with an inbounds underneath the Galleon bucket. Into Swihart. Now to Wenger. Puts it up from mid-range, gets the bounce to go. Wenger now with nine. She ties Swihart for the game lead. It's 25-13. Yeah, so far the, that combo is combined for 18 to 25, and Wenger's going to get another chance at two more. Nice job by... Greater to get back and force the tough shot. She'll get the rebound, so no harm, no foul there. Greater setting up the offense. Backs off, hands it to Eckert. Now you see in the second quarter here, Northmore's going a little bit man-to-man -man defense style, kind of running out of that zone. And Galleon. Seeing the pressure will call timeout. So now we have a chance. Let's, let's shout some people out, Hayden. Looking in. on our Facebook comments, Dora Brown, let's go Lady Knights. Abby Marie, or as I should say, Hayden's fiance, Abby Marie. Got to meet her on Monday at her Christmas party. Yeah. It was a pleasure to meet you, Abby. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Teresa Alk, so grateful for OH Report. Hope OH Report uh -huh. knows what their broadcast means to the athletes and fans. Thank you very much for watching, Teresa. It is our pleasure to bring you these games live and free so you can all watch at home, wherever you may be. And we intend to at least try to keep it live and free for you as well. If it goes our if, it, if it's up to us, we'll keep it live and free way, forever. Yeah. So we come back to action. Eckert gets the inbound. We go up to five minutes left. Make sure to stay tuned for the Avita work well. 
halftime show. We'll have stats analysis and maybe even an interview with Northmore boys coach and Northmore athletic director, Blade Tackett. A lot going on for him. Yes, the man wears many hats. And his wife does as well. Yeah. That shot, tough one, goes in. Perkins now with eight. 25-15. Right on the other end, Swihart answers for three. Yeah, Swihart able to cash in on another three-pointer here tonight. It's going to put her into double digits now with 12 points. Galleon struggling to get anything set up here. Greater corner three, too strong. Ball bounces out of bounds, and will go to the Lady Knights. But a lot of tackets here at Northmore. Taylor, the head assistant for the Lady Knights squad. Also, her and Blade expecting another baby. They have a boy, a young boy, and they're expecting another here in the next couple of months. So congratulations to them. Nice early Christmas gift. Yeah. Oh, that went all the way down. Somehow went back out. Lady Knights with the rebound. Mid-range jumper doesn't fall. Galleon able to clear it out. Trailing by 13 here as we go under four minutes left in a half. Greater. Looking for the screen. Doesn't use it. Goes right side. Kicks it over. Three by Eckert. Too strong. Knocked out of bounds. And it will stay with Galleon as the Lady Knights make a substitution. Zager will check back in. And so far, Galleon, you know, they've been able to find some open looks tonight, but they're just not being, you know, they're just not being able to cash in on those. And second quarter, I think they've been able to find some of those looks they didn't get in the first quarter. They've cut down a bit on those turnovers, but still struggling to get anything to fall. And when you can't get that to happen, it's going to be tough to cut into that lead. It was kicked out of bounds, so it'll stay with Galleon here. 3.32 left in the half. They get it in the grader. She'll pull up for three. Yes! Tough shot. She had a defender in her face, but she hits her second three, and it's back again to a 10-point deficit. Yeah, hand in the face on that one. She was able to get it to fall, and I'm sure they would welcome a few more of those from her. Good ball movement inside. Emily Jordan gets her own rebound, and she'll get fouled. So with three minutes to go in the second quarter, neither team in danger of going to the bonus yet. Emma Jutz called for her first foul. Gets it inside. Emily Jordan from the corner, yes. She's now on the board with two. Back to a 12-point game. 30 to 18. A good offensive first half so far for the Lady Knights, Hayden. Yeah, they've been really consistent from the field, and obviously defensively they've had a lot of success, but you know, they're approaching already almost half. They are well over halfway of their you know nightly average, so got to keep it going with two more there. Offensive rebound put back. Emily Jordan with the last two buckets it's a four point lead 14 point lead my fault <laughs> yeah I, i'm sure she has four points though <laughs> yeah that's that's what i meant we'll go with that and another turnover wenger open look to the hoop she mishandles it but somehow collects herself and scores and you know coach will take that it doesn't always have to look sc top 10 worthy however you got to get those two points earn them and they continue to extend this lead her and Swihart now both in double figures, 12 and 11. And another turnover by Galleon. Emily Zager into the lane, kicks it back out. Johnson just on the line, but there's Swihart with the putback. Another offensive rebound and score. Swihart's really making her mark on this first half as well. She's been there for a lot of those second chance points. Coming up on 130 left in the half. Northmore on a run now. It was a 10-point game, now an 8-0 run. And Zager looks to make it a 10-0 run. She does. Nice job to collect herself there at the end. And Galleon takes a timeout. This was a 28-18 lead, and in the last minute and a half, Northmore on a 10-0 run makes it 38-18. Now they're well in control of this one, Hayden. 
Yeah, I think you know what's some what's starting to happen is you're, that a lot of that fatigue starting to set in for for the Lady Tigers. You know, we found out before the game that there's only seven active girls tonight available for Galleon, so that's only two players on the bench at all times. So it, it's very difficult, especially with how much running they're doing based off those turnovers that they continue to hand over to the Lady Knights. It's going to be a lot of work because you, you haven't seen too many substitutions and not a lot of fouls, so not too many stoppages in play. So that's really going to begin to set in. And it's also not good when you're facing Lexi Wenger, who no. averages 3.2 <laughs> steals per game. Ninth, good enough for ninth right now in the K-Mac. But it seems like also Galleon, they're, they're rushing their passing. They're not looking before throwing it. They're just going through the motions of the offense. You know how you go through practice, you just go through those motions. You just quickly kick and try and go through everything. It seems like they're doing that instead of, you know, slowing things down just a little bit, focusing, looking at where your passes are open. And it's caused a good amount of the 13 turnovers that they've had. Yeah, you don't want to be sitting at 13 turnovers with still a minute 20 left to go in the second quarter. They need to definitely focus on making things cleaner and crisper. And it's almost like my key to the game for Northmore. It goes both ways. That's something where when you're on that other side, you know, go out there and still try and perform to the best of your ability and, and cut down on those things. Nice defense by Lauren Johnson. Stripped away Natalie Perkins. But the Lady Knights give it right back. Their third turnover of the game. Quickly ahead. Lester, she's fouled, and we'll go to the line. Great hustle by the Lady Knights to get back and, and not give up an easy two. Should take a look at the play on the Park National Bank replay. 52 seconds left here on the Morrow County Hospital scoreboard. Lady Knights by 20. And a lot of hustle, a lot of hustle points from Emily Zager tonight. You know, just a junior. She's been all over both ends of the floor on a lot of the connecting sides of those turnovers, forcing them and then finding those open teammates when she hasn't, you know, put it up herself. So she's going to get a well-deserved rest. Desi Lester hits both. 38-20. See if the Lady Knights once again hold for this last shot. Nope. Gets a good look and gets the offensive rebound. Kicks Great. it left side, three in the air by Emma Marshall, yes. And that may be up there with one of, you know, you know, I'm putting a check mark on that possession to go back and watch ball movement there with Stellar from the Lady Knights. Thought maybe they'd be waiting to hold, but found the open girl. Another turnover, another run out and a score. Now we're just 10 seconds away from halftime and they've exploded up to a 23 point advantage. Five seconds. Can they get the shot off? They cannot. They turn it over. And that will do it for the half. Your score after 16 minutes of play. Northmore 41, Gallion 20. We'll take a break. We'll be back with the Avita Work Well Halftime Show. Right after this, you're watching Girls High School Hoops live in three. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Available to care for your athlete with same-day appointment options. Ohio Health. Believe. 
in we lender craftsman dog dead we're more than our job titles and you're more than an account number the personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion by being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals we give you more than just a place to bank that's the more you can expect from park national bank find john or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com park national bank where you mean more <laughs> Merry Christmas! It is halftime here at the castle on this Christmas Eve's Eve's Eve. Lady Knights, 41 to 20 over Galleon. I have 22 for some reason. My apologies. That was the score a few moments ago. Still truthful. Anyway, welcome inside the Avita Work Well halftime. Let's take a look at the halftime stats, Hayden, where it's pretty much been all Lady Knights. 18 field goals, five threes, 11 rebounds, but the big stat turnovers and points off of turnovers. Yeah, that's been definitely the, the Achilles heel for the Galleon Lady Tigers this evening when you're getting out, you know, out battled in turnovers by 13. It's going to be a huge struggle, and, and Northmore's just been able to capitalize off all of those. And, uh, they're just been lights out from the field. We talked about it a couple times throughout the half, but whether it's those twos are out there on the arc, they've been shooting really well and efficiently tonight. So, you know, coach is looking to continue. I mean, I would assume they would like to continue to apply that pressure. You know, they're on pace for their highest scoring game of the season and just a lot of things clicking for them. This would be a great note to send them off into the holiday season. And if you're the Galleon Tigers, just trying to piece together some things at half, come up with a game plan to get through the rest of this game. You know, you want to stay healthy. Fouls haven't been too much of an issue, but again, when you only have two active bench players, it's going to be a little bit difficult. And both teams, they've hit all their free throws. Combined six yeah. of six. Hayden, I'm going to have you hand the headset over as we are joined now by Northmore Boys head coach, Blade Tackett. It's a victory Wednesday for you guys. You got the win over Loudonville here last night. Uh, congratulations on getting back to 500 after a couple, a uh, few tough losses, but you know, back on the right track. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. We're back to 500. Um, chance to go five and four before Christmas, which would eclipse our win total from last year. So we tied it currently before Christmas. Now we're trying to beat it before Christmas season. But yeah, it was a fun night overall. All three teams played really well. Um, big scoring margins. We had a tough first quarter. <clears throat> Defensively, you didn't. Um, offensively, yes. Yeah, defensively, we played really well. Offensively, we struggled a little bit. Got their big guy in foul trouble. And then uh, once we were able to do that, uh, we were able to take control of the game. But overall, fun night. Um, you guys got Clear Fort coming up. And another mm -hmm. one of these MOAC schools yeah. that are they're young. They're young. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow night at Clear Fork. It's a smaller gym, too. I know you guys st uh, you struggled a little bit on that floor down at Danville. But that's a, yeah. that's a different that's a different monster, bro. Uh, what, do, what do you guys what's, – what's the game plan – on a smaller court than what you're used to playing on. Yeah, um, I've never been to the gym, so it'll be my first time there. 
Oh, you're, um, you're in for a treat. It's it's a nice, it's it's a cool gym. Uh, student sections. It reminds me of Crawford's gym yeah. a little bit. Yeah, exactly. It's what yeah. it is. Um, yeah, uh, Clear Fork has some really good pose. So they got some guys about the size of Loudonville last night, but um, in terms of skill and uh, finishing around the basket and uh, positioning on rebounds and back and uh, you know, footwork inside finishing, they're they're pretty solid. So um, our game plan tomorrow will be to uh, really defend the post. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll probably we'll probably double or front and with a lot of help side and uh, pressure pressure the guards on the entry pass, but. You know, other than that, it's basically the same. We'll full court man press. Uh, we'll we'll trap a little bit, but when they get in half court, we'll focus on stopping their bigs. And speaking of Clear Fork, the Lady Colts will be taking on Lady Lex here in about an hour or so. So once you're done watching this one, G-Man and Storm, they're going to be down at the Colt Corral, so you can tune into that one. How did coming up? Oh, never mind. I apologize. They played Mar Marion Harding last night, right? Yeah, yes. I must have been seeing a rerun this Harding, morning. Yeah, Harding, yeah, Harding. You were there last Handled night, Handled right? it. Yeah. I, was, I was actually at River Valley. The Vikings knocking off Shelby. Yeah, big win for Roddy. That was a big, big win for them. I know you're, you're friends with the coaching staff yeah. there as well, but um, they, it was a, a very – they pretty much handled the paint in the first half, mm -hmm. frustrated Shelby down inside. Shelby tried to get in, into, you know, down to the blocks like they'd like to. They like mm -hmm. to, you know, his layups and drawing the fouls, but uh, a lot of charges taken – River Valley took, I think they hit four threes in the opening quarter, took two charges. Mm -hmm. They added two more threes in the second quarter. They took another charge. So okay. on both ends of the ball, they were really playing their game, and it frustrated Shelby. Shelby tried coming back in the second half. They cut it to single digits at the end of the quarter of the third quarter, but River Valley immediately bounced back, and I think it was eight points was the closest that Shelby could get. So the Vikings got a big win. Yeah, yeah, I was texting Coach Brown about it last night. He was pretty he was pretty excited. But congrats to him. They look like they've been playing really well. Of course, they shoot it really well. Every team that Coach Brown coaches has good shooters on it. You've got um, some good shooters yourself. Uh, yeah, we a young sophomore well last night. by the name of Grant Bentley has yeah. been putting up some big numbers like he did the, the second half of the season. But, you know, you, you guys knew you were a young squad last year. You're going to take your lumps. But it seems like it's paying off this year because – you're competitive. The losses that you guys have had, you were competitive in them. You know, a tough loss at Mount Gilead that could have gone your way. Uh, you were in it in the last couple of minutes to the Centerburg, who's one of the favorites in the conference, as well as East Knox. Mm -hmm. You get another chance at those squads. But, I mean, other than Colonel Crawford, you guys have been in every game yeah. and more competitive than last year, which has got to be a great sign for you. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited about that. Uh, like you said, outside of Crawford, we've competed in every game. Um, we've won some close ones. With some shots and bounces that went our way, we've lost some close ones. But, you know, I think we're getting better uh, down the stretch and in close moments. And uh, I think second half of the season, uh, more of those close games uh, will keep coming our way. But like you said, yeah, credit to our guys uh, for staying the course. And, and staying um, here after practice. I see them all down there watching this game. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they do a good job supporting the girls. And, and I do want to get your comment on this game. And yeah. We're covering this one tonight. But uh, – Lady Knights, big defensive effort in that second quarter to take a big lead. Yeah, they're really playing well, um, and, man, they shoot it really well as well. Talk about three-point shooters. Um, a lot of the, most of these girls on the floor, four out of five of them, you, you leave them open at the three-point line, they're probably going to knock it down, and then they got some shooters off the bench too. But it looked like they had a good second quarter defensively, like you said. Um, I think against uh, their last game against Centerburg, they shot 63% from wow. the field. Um, and, uh, yeah, they shoot it really well from three-point range uh, today as well early on. So, yeah, they're playing really well. Um, and credit them. they got a tough game next week against Loudonville. So we'll hopefully they finish this one out here. And um, they kind of carry this on to Loudonville when they, play, uh, when they play a really solid opponent. Three in the air by Perkins. Doesn't go. Gallion tried to save the rebound, but they don't. But thank you, Coach. Yeah, no problem. Good man. luck Thanks tomorrow against Clear Fork. And Appreciate if I don't it. see you, buddy, have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Travis. Thanks for coming, as always. We love you guys. Hey, no problem. Three in the corner. Yes. Told you. <laughs> Kobe. That was the Avita Workwell halftime as Paige Caudill with the first points of the second half as we welcome back in Hayden Gray. But uh, always nice talking to Coach Blade Tackett, he is a personal friend of mine, great guy, and the athletic director, boys head coach, does a lot of things here at Northmore. Lady Knights get the rebound, and they will try and add on to this 26-point lead.
What do you want to see from Galleon here in this second half, Hayden? They're down 26, but you, there's some things you can work on. I mean, if they can get a lot, if they can get points in bunches here, they can get back into this game, but Wenger and company, if you could leave her open like that, it's not going to be much of a chance. Yeah, I think one thing you're looking for if you're Galleon tonight is, you know, finding those little things. These are always great opportunities down almost 30 to go ahead and against a quality opponent, find some things that do click for you, maybe try some new things. This is the perfect time to do so if you haven't this year. Another turnover is going to come their way, but if you've had anything, anything as a coach that you've been wanting to run or try out and haven't had the right time to do it, now's your chance. Um, so maybe, you know, experiment with some things, but also look to get Tiana Greta a few more open looks. She's hit down a couple threes for them, so far leading scoring for them tonight, so we'll see if she can get a few more open looks. Right side, Caudill for another three. A little too strong rebound out by Gallion, and there is Grader. A little hesitation, pull it back out. They'll reset the offense. Grader and Perkins both leading Gallion with eight points apiece. They also had Eckert and Lester with two points. That was it, all they had. And on the other side, seven Lady Knights got into the scoring column, led by Swihart with 14. Wenger had 11, and then you had... Dennison with five. Paige Caudell tied her with five points on that first three from the corner. So a lot of bounce scoring for the Lady Knights in that first half. Yeah, and, and you have to look at forced turnovers as well would be extremely well balanced as another one comes. And I think we got an injured player here. That's Eckert. Don't know what happened, maybe a collision or something with her ankle, but she's going to have to take a seat. Yeah, obviously she's going to be able to go check in with Coach and, and get over to the side on her own power. They're going to bring a sub in. So obviously for the Tigers' sake and just for anyone's sake, you obviously hope for the best and that she's not too severely injured. But, you know, puts Galleon in a pickle now just down to one substitute available on the bench. We'll see if she's able to return. The training staff over here from Northmore checking with her. She's all smiles. So that may be just a little, little dink. Greater. Into the lane. Left side to Lester. Looking. Picked up her dribble. She's got to get away. She does. Gets it to Perkins. Under five to play here. Third quarter. Lady Knights by 28. And there's another turnover. The 19th by Galleon. And 19 so far through their games this season through nine games. That's what they've averaged. So they're going to be above average on turnovers here tonight. I would say they're, the rebounding all those going well for them. They've only given up 12 rebounds so far, but that's because most of Northmore's shots have gone through the net. Yeah, and when they haven't, you see, you know, Swihart fought for that offensive rebound again. But as you just brought up, you know, they, Galleon's doing a nice job of controlling those rebounds and not letting Northmore have their, their usual accommodations to those as they normally have. Grader gets it to Jutz. Now left side to Lester. Coming up on the midway point of the third quarter. Lester works her way around, forces up a shot. Off the back iron, no good. Back come the Lady Knights and Brooke Dennison. Over to Swihart, open three. Off the side iron, rebound Wenger. She'll put it back, and we'll go to the line. She'll take a look at the Park National Bank replay. Yeah, and you're going to notice on this replay, you got one Swihart, and she's going to take the look. But then you also have the opportunity, Paige Caudill open just a few feet from her, and then Lexi Wenger also over in the corner. So a choice of three Lady Knights that could have taken that shot there. Yeah, she was in the corner. Nobody had her. She comes in, gets the rebound. <laughs> And the first free throw is good by her. 14 points now. Chance to put them up by 30. No. Doesn't make the second one. That's the first missed free throw tonight. Although that was only the eighth attempted free throw, too. Yeah. Again here over halfway through the third quarter, and, you know, foul trouble just hasn't been a thing tonight for either side. Turnover number 20 by Galleon. 49-20 on the Morrow County Hospital scoreboard. Give and go. 
Inside to Zager, too strong. Rebound the greater. She'll take it across the timeline. Weaves it around to Lester. Now to Perkins. Back to Lester for three. Off the side iron. Perkins with the offensive rebound. Forces one up. It goes. So they're going to get their first bucket. If we had, you know, if we looked back at that one, almost looked like a bit of a travel, but for the sake of this one, we're going to go ahead and. There's a little bit of bumping, too, so I think the yeah. referees canceled out the foul on the walk. I'll take that. That was a tough shot by her. Gets her into double figures now with 10. Right side, winger back to Swihart. Now to Zager for three. Off the front iron, rebound to Gallion. Trap, but somehow Grader comes back with it. Works it back to Perkins. Got to get it across the timeline. She does before the time, the 10 second count. Puts up a three, but she was about five feet behind the line. Then it'll go to Northmore. Coach Rush wanted a timeout as well. <laughs> you know, that, that was actually a scenario I saw last night over at the Cool Crawl for boys, though. When you have that risk of, you know, getting that 10 second violation, I believe even with the heads on, I heard Coach call for a timeout. They got across, so maybe the refs, they, they didn't call it, but now she actually won a one, so a little bit of miscommunication. Yeah, Coach Beachy ended up calling the timeout to get a couple subs in, but Perkins, I think, rushed it a little bit. She was about, f I think she was a couple feet further behind the three-point line than she had expected to, short on the bucket. And the ball went back to the Lady Knights, who will get possession out of this timeout. Tonight's high school Girls Basketball live stream brought to you live and free on the OH Report. Thanks to our generous sponsors, Avita Workwell, Park National Bank, and Morrow County Hospital. Thank you all for allowing us to bring these games to you live and free right here on the OH Report. And fans, not only do we have the games tonight, but we have one more set of games tomorrow for you. We'll preview those here as the game goes on. But tonight... After this one, we have Lexington Clear Fork Girls Basketball. Garrett and Storm, G-Man and Storm will be on the call of that one. We also have a highlight, Western Reserve and South Central, a big battle for first place in the Firelands Conference. Dalen is up there with the highlights. That'll be tonight, either later this evening or tomorrow morning. You'll be able to see those. Lady Knights almost turn it over. Emily Jordan able to save it. Left side to Lauren Johnson. Frantic ball movement by the Lady Knights. Somehow they haven't turned it over yet, though. Zager back out to Jordan, works it in, kicks it back out. Yet, yeah, you know, offensively, I would say this is their bit most out of system possession tonight. Tigers defensively getting their way so far, not allowing too many looks inside, cutting off those passing lanes. Runner, yes, in the foul. So after all of that, Lauren Johnson now on the board. Yeah, nice job by Johnson. And I think what you're seeing right now with this sizable lead, Northmore taking advantage and able to get some youth to get, you know, some quality minutes that might not see as much any other given night. Lauren Johnson, just a junior. She is now the eighth player on the board here tonight for the Lady Knights. And they are, you were talking about the position. Now we do have to say Wenger and Swihart, they're getting right. a break on the bench. These are some of the players that come off the bench or get not as much playing time as those. So this is good experience for them as well. As that shot off the rim and out of bounds. It'll go back to the Lady Knights who now lead by 29 here. 116 left in the third. And you know, Travis normally gives their minors, but anyone out there watching? Let us know where you're watching from. I see we have a new comment from Troy McNair, my future father-in-law, saying go, go, guys. So, oh, thank you, sir. Appreciate the love. I'll see, we I'm got sorry. I'm sorry you have to get a <laughs> son-in-law like him. No, I'm kidding. He's a great guy. Uh, great addition to the family, I bet as well. Another turnover by Gallion. Does it turn into points for Johnson? No. Oh, nice. Kicks it over to Lauren Johnson, and they'll kick it back out. 
Right side, three in the air by Zager. Off the iron, rebound out to Galleon. 25 seconds left in the third. Trapped. Do they turn it over? No. Grader gets back to it. And then she throws it out of bounds to nobody. Tough break there by Galleon. It looked like they were going to be able to clear it out, but don't. And now the Lady Knights, another chance of getting on the board before the end of the third. Yeah, previously Perkins had that block. She leads the way for the team with two blocks per game so far this season. But that trap just showing how how dangerous and how you know pestering it can be forces a lot of turnovers when you can run that successfully. Jordan airballs it. So with seven seconds left, Galleon will get one more chance at it before we go to the third quarter break. Grader not pushing it. Three seconds, two, one. Does she get a shot off? She does. Ooh. Oh, just off the front iron. But that'll do it for three. Your score after three, Lady Knights 53, Lady Tigers 22. You're watching Girls High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Available to care for your athlete with same day appointment options. Ohio Health, believe in we. Lender, Craftsman, Dog Dad. We're more than our job titles and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. About ready to go here to start the fourth quarter. Lady Knights well in control of this one, 53-22. Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray and Lexi Wenger. Back into the scorebook for three. Her second tray of the night. 17 points for her now. Lady Knights now up 34. Yeah, I'm right, 34, right? Yeah. Yep, okay. they're going to be up 34. Okay. and One more point, we go into the running clock situation. Yeah, running clock obviously being a part of boys and girls high school hoops this season. Left side three. Eckert has something to say about that. Her fifth point of the night, 56-25. Swihart on the other end. Too short, offensive rebound put back, yes. Brooke Dennison. Her ninth point, 58-25, minute gone by here in the fourth. Got a couple of choices for tonight's player of the game, Hayden. Yeah, it's definitely been well balanced all over the place because, you know, a lot of the times people look straight for those points. What passing there off the steal. Swihart with 16. And now it is 35 points. Running clock situation here with 6.30 left in the game. Yeah, so essentially running clock in high school hoops, what's that going to mean is that clock is not going to stop during substitutions. The only time the clock's going to stop is during timeouts. Yep. They used this in the tournament last year. They liked what they saw, so they put it into regular season play. Three-pointer no good by Swihart. Rebound taken out by the Lady Tigers with six minutes left. One thing I've noticed tonight, you know, Natalie Perkins just not having the quite that evening she's used to. She has 10 points this evening, so just a point and a half shy of her average per game this year, but just kind of, you know, has felt like a quiet night for the team and for Perkins herself. Lady Knights making a couple substitutions. as you do see the running clock. Right, 
Perkins looking. Gets it in to Eckert. And she goes off her foot, gets it back. Now to Perkins, stripped away. And that's picked up by Riley Johnson, but stripped, taken right away. Grader into the lane, blocked. Rebound put back, and that'll be a foul. And Eckert will go to the line for two. Eckert actually the top free throw shooter on the team, 87.5% free throw shooting this season. Only eight attempts from the line, but nonetheless, she leads the way for the Lady Tigers. First free throw off the back iron, and the jinx has happened. We knew it was going to happen at some point. <laughs> Second free throw good. Sixty twenty six. Johnson inside to Brinkman, back to Johnson. Kicks it back out. Now to Zager. Lady Knights trying to get it inside the Brinkman, but Perkins doing a good job guarding her. Marshall for three, yes! The ball movement worked. Marshall now with two threes. Six points, it's 63-26. And I think, you know, this is definitely one of their most successful nights from behind the line so far on this early season. They're just having their way, and multiple of them are getting into the books. And again, another turnover. Nice pass. Layup good. Emily Zager now with six points. Lady Knights, all but two players have scored tonight. Yeah, now we're approaching that, you know, where we're starting to recognize how many are getting into double digits here tonight. So we do have a tough decision ahead of us for player of the game. Three in the air, forced by Perkins. Won't fall, rebound though. Put back, yes, and one. Eckert, Eckert once again. Definitely has, you know, continued throughout this whole game. Eckert has to show effort and her, her fighting spirit. You know, she's approaching with this free throw. Eight points now on the evening. Missed the free throw, though. 65-28. Moving it around. Right side three again from Marshall off the front iron. Rebound to Gallion. Immediately trapped, but Greater able to bounce it off a Lady Knight. They'll maintain possession. Coming up on two minutes left. They are going to lax off that trap a bit, but that's also one of those things, you know, their rotation tonight, they've been able to have quite the luxury of making lots of substitutions and doing it frequently so you can stay in that trap a little longer with how much stamina you're saving by making those rotations and bringing different girls in this evening. Another turnover. 26th by Gallion. Jo Johnson for three, no. Offensive rebound though, kicks it back out. I think everyone wanting to get a little bit of that three point party action here. Riley Johnson, left side to Marshall, gets it inside. Nice shot by Riley Johnson. Yeah, beautiful ball movement there, and that's a tough shot when you come in from that corner even a bit. You know, the backboard's out of play, so you got to switch that one, and she knocked it down. Coming up on a minute left here in the game, 67-28 Lady Knights well on their way to another win. No call there. Greater <laughs> from inside the line doesn't get it to fall. I think we're getting to the point where the refs are just letting this thing finish out. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think sometimes both as a spectator and a player, you don't, you don't mind it. Nothing too big that's going to impact the outcome. Three in the air again for Marsh. Yes! <laughs> Emma Marshall with nine. It's 70 to 28. Yeah, they've just exploded their performance from the line tonight. Greater with an answer. She's in the double digits now with 10. 
40-point game, under 30 left. And Galleon still with a chance. They average about 32 and a half a game, so they still have a chance to hit their season average if they can get the Almost ball away from the Lady it. Knights. 13 seconds left. Works it inside, turns it over. And then a jump ball. But that will let the, run, the clock yeah. run out with the running clock. So it's going to do it. That will do it. Your final. The Lady Knights of Northmore pull away for the 70 to 30 victory. We're going to take a break. Be back for the Avita Work Well post game show and our player of the game right here live and free on the OH Report. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Available to care for your athlete with same-day appointment options. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Lender. Craftsman. Dog Dead. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Your final score here from the castle. Lady Knights taking care of business. Travis Bray back here with Hayden Gray on the Avita Work Well post game show. And let's take a look at our final stats while our MVP makes their way up here. But all dominated by the Lady Knights after you know the first six minutes. It was close, 10 point game. And then the Lady Knights go on a 10 0 run and take care of business from there. 29 field goals to 10, nine threes. Just a great offensive night for them. 
Yeah, 27 points off three-pointers tonight, and it came from a variety of Lady Knights, you know, not just dominated one way or the other. Uh, a rare night for them kind of, you know, being out-rebounded. Um, but just five fouls total for the game and five turnovers. Those are phenomenal numbers. On the other side, seven fouls for the Lady Tigers. Not bad on the evening, but the 26 turnovers, that's going to do it for you. You know, almost as many points as turnovers. But, you know, a good night from the line for both teams, just missing a couple. But those are the major tells of the tale tonight. Yep. 2018 rebounding, but Northmore really didn't get, need a lot of rebounds because they made almost every shot they took, it felt like. Fouls really not a factor you said like you said the turnovers just galleon gave it up way too many times free throw shooting lady tigers are five of seven free throws were three of five there's our hi guys there's our <laughs> mvp reagan swihart and we will talk to her right after this live and free on the oh report Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Available to care for your athlete with same-day appointment options. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Lender. Craftsman. Dog Dad. We're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. The personal attention we provide comes from a promise to serve you with respect and compassion. By being responsive to your questions and taking time to understand your needs and goals, we give you more than just a place to bank. That's the more you can expect from Park National Bank. Find John or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. All right, I'm back here tonight with tonight's MVP, Reagan Swihart. Reagan, obviously a big win for you girls tonight, 70-30 to 30 over Galleon. Um, 16 points coming from you tonight. Um, two threes, you know, the th whole team was shooting really well from three tonight. Tell me what was going on for you girls tonight from three-point land and for you personally. How are those shots falling tonight and what kind of looks were you getting? Um, I mean, our main goal is just kind of to swing the ball and get any open shot we can. I mean, our girls aren't really selfish. We don't really... I mean, sometimes we'll take the first shot, other times we'll just swing the ball and whoever's open, as long as it, they're falling, we're excited for each other and we're just happy to be on. Yeah, and a lot of second chance points also coming from you tonight. You know, what's it like, what are you looking for when you're down there in that paint battling it out? You know, do you like to go for those opportunities and not get back, you know, leave a, a possession empty, stay down there as long as you can to get those second chance points? Because that's something that definitely excelled from you tonight. Uh, yeah, I'd say my favorite thing is probably to grab boards and put the ball back up. I mean, and I feel like if I get a rebound and don't go for a second chance, I'm letting my team down when I miss, so. And so far this season, you know, with the win tonight, you're already up to seven wins, you know, five wins total on the season last year, so you've already excelled that and, and in such a small amount of games. What's clicking for, for you girls this season and just going on that, you know, feels different from last year? Is it, you know, identity or just how you've been working as a group? What's going on this year so, for so much success? I mean, last year we had a losing record. We kind of had a rough season. And, I mean, we've been telling people we're better this year. And uh, there's a lot of doubt coming at us. I think we're just out there trying to prove ourselves, proving that we're a better team. We're working together and we just, we're all scoring as much as we can. We're not a selfish team at all. That certainly was on full display tonight. And finally, you know, if there's anyone you want to give a shout out to, you can go ahead and do so. I mean, shout out to the coaches. Uh, they've just, they've believed in us this season and they know that we can beat any team as long as we work as hard as we, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> uh, as long as we're working hard, working together. And shout out to Lex on that last point. I mean, I know that she would have taken, she could have taken that easily. She was just trying to give me my points tonight, make sure I wasn't too far behind her. <laughs> All right, so again, the ever humble Reagan Swihart, 16 points tonight on their 70 to 30 victory. Congratulations, Reagan, and have a terrific holiday season. Thank you, you too. Thank you once again to our MVP, Reagan Swihart, as the Lady Knights pull away for the 70 to 30. Victories. We take a look at some individual scoring. Lexi Wenger, 17 points. She led all scorers. Swihart with 16, our MVP. Emma Marshall with nine points. 
Brooke Dennison with seven. Five points for Paige Caudill, six points for Emily Zager, four points Riley Johnson, two points Lauren Johnson, four points Emily Jordan. And then on the other side of things, Galleon, the Lady Tigers were led by Natalie Perkins and Tiana Graders, 10 points each. Cameron Eckert, set six points, eight points actually, eight points for her. And then Desi Lester with two points. I want to remind you, actually in about yeah. five minutes, we will be live from the Colt Corral as Clear Fork, the Lady Colts, look to remain hot as they take on the Lexington Minutemen, Lady Lex, G-Man and Storm. They'll be on the call here shortly. And then tomorrow, Hayden and I will be up at Willard to finish things off with our OH Report games before the holiday break. That game starting at 7.30 will probably be on the air around 7.15. We also have two highlights Willard Shelby girls should be a good one. And then Ontario and Lexington boys will have those highlights for you later tomorrow night or early Christmas Eve. Galleon, their next game. They, had, they get some time off for the Christmas break. New Year's Eve, they'll take on New London in the Wayne Roller Holiday Showcase at Mansfield Christian. That game, I believe, is a 1 o'clock tip. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what it is. And then for the Lady Knights, their next game, a tough one. They host the Loudonville Redbirds. We've seen the Lady Redbirds. This year, really good team. They'll take them on on the 29th. So both teams, they can celebrate Christmas now and not worry about any more basketball being played. But for us, that'll do it for tonight. I want to thank everybody for help making this possible. Everybody back at OH Report World Headquarters. Brian Skronsky, Jory Hollenbeck, Adam Thompson, our great cameraman, Nick Jacobs, as always. Morrow County Hospital, our... Scoreboard sponsor, replay sponsor, Park National Bank, Avita Work Well, our pregame, halftime, and postgame sponsors, and then Park and Morrow County Hospital, once again, our commercial sponsors. We want to thank Blade Tackett and the Northmore Athletic Department for allowing us to be here, and thank Blade for coming on at halftime. And most importantly, we want to thank you, the fans, for watching. Your final score one more time here from the castle, Northmore rolls to a 70-30 victory over the Galleon Lady Tigers. For Hayden Gray, I'm Travis Barari saying so long from the castle and Merry Christmas. We'll see you on a live stream near you or maybe just in 15 minutes if you want to as well right here. But for now, so long.